Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 1. In this video, we'll finally see the most accurate picture of what molecules really look like that we'll see in this course. It's a good way to end the chapter, because it ties together what we learned about orbitals way back in video 21, plus the Lewis dot structures we talked about five videos ago, and also the molecular geometries we've been talking about for the past two videos. It turns out there are still some surprises in store for us when we think about the shapes of molecules. So to start, let's look at the very simplest molecule we have, hydrogen gas, H2. A hydrogen molecule is just two hydrogen atoms bonded together. But think about this picture. We know that molecules don't really look like this. Atoms aren't like tiny balls, and bonds aren't like tiny little sticks. Remember, back in video 20, we saw that electrons are waves. They're spread out in the space around the nucleus of an atom. The orbitals we talked about, like s and p orbitals, just represent the area where most of the electron wave, called a wave function, is located. The orbital doesn't really have a sharp edge. So, back to this picture of the hydrogen atom, the orbital on each atom is spread out much more than this picture shows us. A more realistic picture of a hydrogen molecule is this one. The two orbitals on the hydrogen atoms actually overlap each other. The area where they overlap is actually what the bond is. Remember, in a covalent bond, the electrons in the bond are shared by the two atoms. That's exactly what we're seeing here for the hydrogen. Here are a couple more examples of molecules we've seen in previous videos. This is acetic acid as a ball and stick model. And here's a more realistic picture. And here's sulfur hexafluoride as a ball and stick model, and as a more realistic model. Now in the hydrogen molecule, the two orbitals that overlap each other are two 1s orbitals, one on each atom. If you were to stand at one end of the molecule and look along the bond, it would look just like a circle. Bonds like this that look circular if you view them along the bond are called sigma bonds. It might seem as though only bonds made of s orbitals will look circular, but it turns out that other types of orbitals can also make circular looking bonds. For example, suppose we have a chlorine molecule, Cl2. The bond is made from two overlapping p orbitals. You might remember that there are three different p orbitals, each of them pointing along a different axis. These are definitely not round, but here's what happens in a chlorine molecule. The z-axis is the one that connects the two atoms. In chlorine, the bond is made from the two p orbitals that point along this axis. When they overlap, we get something that looks like this. If we were to stand at one end of the molecule and look along the bond, here's what we'd see. This looks circular. That makes it a sigma bond. The bond looks like a circle from the end, even though the two orbitals themselves aren't round. Almost all single bonds are sigma bonds. All the single bonds in these molecules look circular when you view them along the bond. But what about double bonds? Well, a double bond consists of two bonds. One of them is still a sigma bond, usually made from two p orbitals along the z-axis. But the second bond is made from two p orbitals oriented along a different axis, either the x or the y. For example, here are two oxygen atoms, double bonded together. One of the two bonds is a sigma bond, made from the two p orbitals along the z-axis. But the other bond in the double bond comes from two p orbitals pointing in the x direction. Notice what happens. The two halves of each orbital are called lobes. And you can see that the lobes of one orbital overlap with the lobes of the other one. Here's what that looks like. If you were to look at this bond from along the z-axis, you'd see that the bond isn't circular. Instead, one lobe is above the center of the bond, and the other is below the center. Instead of a sigma bond, this is called a pi bond. So every single bond is a sigma bond, and every double bond is one sigma bond and one pi bond. 
What about a triple bond, like the one in a nitrogen molecule? In a triple bond, there are a total of three bonds. The first two are the same as in a double bond. One's a sigma bond made from two overlapping orbitals oriented along the z-axis, and the second is a pi bond made from two orbitals parallel to the x-axis. In the third bond, we have overlap between two p orbitals oriented in the direction of the y-axis, which is the one we haven't used yet. Just like the second bond, this one results from overlap between both lobes of the orbital. If you were to stand at the end of the molecule and look down the bond, you'd see that this one isn't circular. In fact, it looks just like the second bond, except the two halves of the orbitals are pointed to the left and right, instead of up and down. That means this bond is another pi bond. So, a triple bond consists of a sigma bond and two pi bonds. As you might have noticed, in order to have a pi bond, the atoms have to be pretty close to one another so that the p orbitals on each atom can overlap. That means a triple bond is usually very short, while double bonds are a bit longer and single bonds are the longest. That turns out to be very true. If we compare these three molecules, you can see that one has a nitrogen triple bond, one has a double bond, and one has a single bond. And just as we predicted, the triple bond is the shortest at 0.1093 nanometers. And the single bond is the longest at 0.1470 nanometers. One last thing you might have noticed. The three p orbitals are all at right angles to each other, and the s orbitals are spherical. So how is it that we can get some of the shapes that we saw in the last video? For example, how can we have a tetrahedral molecule like methane, where the bond angle is 109.5 degrees? The key is to remember something I said earlier in this video. Electrons behave like waves, not particles. Imagine you're at the beach, watching waves in the water. When two waves meet each other, they combine, and the larger wave you get as a result isn't shaped exactly like either of the two waves you started with. The same is true when we combine electrons. Remember, each orbital describes the shape of the wave for the electron we're looking at. When we combine electrons from different orbitals, we might get a very different shape than the orbitals we started with. There's a lot of math involved in figuring out exactly what the final shape will be. We won't do that math here, but it is something we care about in the physical chemistry course, and I hope you'll take that class someday. But for now, it's enough to know that if an atom only has single bonds, the valence s orbital and all three valence p orbitals of that atom combine. The shape of the orbitals that result is a tetrahedron. When valence orbitals combine in this way, the orbitals that result are called hybrid orbitals. And the one we just saw, where the hybrid orbitals have a tetrahedral shape, is called an sp3 hybrid. We also get an sp3 hybrid if the central atom has one or two unshared electron pairs on it, as long as all the bonds are single bonds. So, for example, the nitrogen and ammonia and the oxygen and water both have sp3 hybrid orbitals, and that's why their bond angles are about 109.5. If the central atom has one double bond, as in this formaldehyde molecule, then we get a different hybrid orbital, called an sp2 hybrid. This has a trigonal planar shape, so sp2 hybrid orbitals have a 120 degree angle between them. Just as with sp3 hybrids, sp2 hybrids can have an unshared electron pair on the central atom, as long as there's only one double bond on the atom. So, for example, the sulfur in sulfur dioxide has an sp2 hybrid orbital, which is why it has a bond angle of 120 degrees. Finally, if the central atom has a triple bond, or two double bonds, then the orbitals combine to make hybrid orbitals that form a linear molecule. This type of hybrid is called an sp hybrid. The carbon and carbon dioxide, and also an acetylene, both have sp hybrid orbitals, and that's why these are linear molecules. Hybrid molecules are especially important in your organic chemistry course, because almost all the molecules you'll work with in that course contain carbons with tetrahedral, trigonal planar, or bent shapes, so they all have hybrid orbitals. 
Well, that's all for now. Ever since video 18, we've been delving deep into the structure of atoms and molecules, and you've learned a lot about what the electrons in atoms are like, and how they combine and interact with each other to form bonds, and give us molecules with interesting shapes. In the next video, we'll step back and look at the big picture again. We'll start by looking at gases, and we'll see that you're already familiar with the behavior of many gases, and they tell us a lot about things we see in the everyday world. I hope you'll join me for that next video. But until then, have a good week.